Greetings from beautiful Oaxaca State, Mexico. We're at an elevation of 3,900 feet. You're watching Crime Page by Botany Does It. And I'm here today to show you what is probably the largest cactus species in the world, Pachycereus webri. Okay, and this is this is a medium-sized one. They get much larger than this. I've seen them where they're twice as big as this, where you got twice as many stems sticking up. Look, that thing's as big as a house. All right? And then the base of the trunk, which looks like some sort of damn, like the the foot of some damn giant Pleistocene rhinoceros. It's probably, I don't know, three feet across. Then looking up into the canopy there, you could see, I mean, you could fit a couple people up in there. You could fit, well, you could fit three or four families up in there, you know? And how long has it been here just growing on the edge of this, this wash? All right, the, this town that we're in is mostly indigenous. All right, I mean, there's people speaking, and he's not even speaking Spanish, they're speaking a mixtec. And look at it, you got one of those, <laughs> look at that, this thing is enormous. One of those giant trunks falls over and is still connected. And, uh, you know, it just uh, continues to be held up by the uh, giant candelabra shape of this uh, trunk right here. So we're at about the eastern, the northeastern extent of its range right here. It goes, uh, yeah, maybe this, the whole distribution of this species goes west into Puebla and uh, then west into Guerrero and, uh, and then a little bit further east than wh where we are right now. But uh, it's, not, it's not a very large range. It's like maybe three or four states in Mexico, if that. And generally low, again, we are at 3,800 feet. This is one of the lowest points that we've been to we've been we basically traveled from mexico city en route to oaxaca most of that has been at, you know above a mile high over five thousand feet just i mean look at that thing i don't know anywhere in the united states you could grow this it does require a lot of heat and a lot of exposure and of course they are frost sensitive and below a certain temperature i think like below 70 they're not even going to grow so, you know, I had one, I was growing one as a cutting in Oakland. It barely added a couple inches until I put it in a greenhouse. Of course, they're very susceptible to rot unless they got that heat. The more heat you got, the less rot susceptible you are, the more water you can take. The cooler you are, the drier you got to be. At least if you're uh, one of these cacti from Central Mexico that's used to a, a, whole, lot of, a whole lot of heat. His plant metabolism is dependent on temperature. Look at that, there's a root. So these things bloom at night. They're a night blooming cactus when they do bloom. They bloom up at the top of those, uh, the apical maris stem of each one of those stems. And uh, they're pollinated by bats. And then the fruit matures and it's got a whole bunch of spines on it. The spines will fall off uh, once it's uh, mature, but not, not until, not until then. 
I guess it's probably to prevent uh, things from eating the fruit until it's ready to go. Until those seeds are fully developed inside. Looks like it looks like it got some sort of damn tumor on it. Maybe from some uh, agrobacterium or something. Get the bark on this guy too. What's going on in the bark? Is there a whole community of organisms that live on this bark too? A microbial community? I mean those goats sound like they're having a rough time. See here's uh here's the old fruits right there. See that? Covered in the spines. Very verdant and green wash. Very pleasant temperature right now, not too hot. Anyway, here's a young one, a young pack of Sirius Weber. Very beautiful cactus, even when they're not flowering. Look at that, the new growth has all those betalane pigments, all those red pigments to protect that new tissue from being fried in the sun. Those red pigments are kind of like uh, protective pigments, kind of like plant melanin. And look at the, look at the farina on that, that waxy farina. Behold, architectural beauty. Got one central spine and an eight to 10 radial spines. And of course, I guess you only get that farina on the older tissue. You could see the new growth. That, that much growth is probably in the last, I don't know, six months, a year. Did it grow that fast? There's really no way to date cacti. I don't know how you would. All you gotta do is, like, all you could do is guesstimate. But look at that. The colors on it. Look at it. Listen to me getting all fucking Martha Stewart here with the interior decorating. Let me choose your color palette of your bedroom. So how long can these live? Can cacti live to be a thousand years old? This is, I would guess, maybe three or four hundred. I don't know. You know, how do you estimate the growth rate? The things that this, this plant has seen, though. And again, they, I've seen them a lot bigger than this, but what a goddamn beast. Holy hell. Look, the spread, the depth. This thing is as big as a house, if not bigger. You know, you could fit a mobile home up uh, up in at the candelabra, in the middle of the candelabra. You could do that. And then down the road a little ways, here's a young one. Still got that beautiful blue color. Got a... This member of Malpighiaceae right here, the Malpighia family. Same order as Euphorbia and Willow. Little oh, clawed petals. Everything is so green. The smell, the smell is pleasant as hell. Oh, look at this Vichelia. Look at it. With those stipules that have just been turned into really mean spines. Get your nice Parkinsonia. Pleasant temperature, it's it's really not that hot. Oh yeah, how do you think that is? 120 maybe? A very mean cylindro punch over here. And of course the whole ground here seems to be limestone, but I've seen them growing on volcanic too. I don't think a pack of serious webberry really minds. You got some birds living up there. Look at it, look at those mountains over there. With all that cloud cover, verdant green, not too hot, warm but not too hot. You know, you're not sweating your balls off here. It's not 105. You can see why people have lived in the uh, Tehuacan Valley for so long, right? You know, right there in that uh, Oaxaca Pueblo border. Okay, here we go. A couple St. Patrick species that grow with that pack of Sirius Weberi. Over here, we got a Steno Sirius Stellatus. Betalane pigments in that flower. You can see it's just starting to bloom. It should be blooming, I don't know, next couple of days. There's a fruit maturing. Edible and delicious, but you just got to shave those spines off. Then behind it, we got our old friend, uh, Lamero Sirius Hollyanus. Named after some dead white guy named Holland. Who the shit was Holland? What is the name of Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's named after something else. Hollyanus. A jolly anus. <clears throat> anyway, there's the fruits on those. Again, just covered in the trichomes and uh, spines. See that? But look, that red color indicates uh, it's probably very sweet when you cut it open. Just a bunch of vertical organ pipes. All right, and they, they look alike. I mean, until you recognize the subtle nuances, you'd think these were both the same species. Again, Stenoceris stellatus and Lamero series. But you look at the spines on that, much longer, they're kind of pointing down. 
and uh, this one you know if you ever see a branching it mostly just branches at the base if it branches at all and you'll just get these long segments sometimes 12 18 feet long just forming a little organ pipe see there's a good example of that steno series look how long those central spines are see that come on see these say long ass central spines okay, look at that holy hell Look at those mountains, Jesus Christ. Oh, it smells incredible, perfect temperature. There's another massive bastard that's also a sympatric, that is it grows with in the same habitat as a Pachycerus weberi. This is Escantria chiotia. You can see those fruits right there, very distinct with that uh, little papery brack surrounding that fruit. See that, that maturing fruit. Okay, monotypic genus here. How many ribs you got on there? So remember ribs, central spines, radial spines, any subtle, any little subtle nuance you can use to differentiate between what is essentially just a photosynthetic stem. Looks like we got eight ribs there. Is that about right? Yeah, maybe, maybe eight, six to eight. And, but those fruits are the most distinct. It's the most, that's the biggest giveaway. And then of course, just the general habit. All right, kind of like an octopus with, you know, six dozen arms. You know, octopus stuck upside down on the ground with six dozen arms. These things can get massive. I've seen them upwards 20, 30 feet tall before. Anyway, there's the gyrocarpus loralis. So, uh, same order as avocado, but it's in the Hernandiaceae. Kind of a weird family. Pantropical distribution of this genus. And the fruit's got a little propeller, little helicopter propeller on them. We got our old friend Maloki at Tomatosa, Malvasi, and, uh, Blooming right in front of us, we got Senna Wislizinii. Another wonderful favorite with the little, the paper lantern Senna, as I call it. See, cause they just got those little pendant flowers. It looks like a paper lantern, but open it up and you got your typical Senna thing going on. Porocytal anthers, a green style that turns into a pea fruit. And uh, looks like you got, yeah, three different kinds of anthers right there. You get the, the three, uh, Staminodes up top. Senna's are always so cool. Always fun to look at them. And you could just hear all the damn cicadas and everything. And of course, we got our old friend Pachycerus webri. Now you could see, you could probably tell I'm a little enamored with this plant. Okay, it does calm down my homicidal thoughts at times, just because it's such an amazing. I mean, how did something like this evolve? How how does it get so goddamn big? How old does it live? Nice Parthenium too. Parthenium tomentosum, somewhat related to ambrosia, the ragweeds, which make everyone uh, be sneezing their ass off in the spring. But the ragweeds are wind pollinated, that's why you're allergic to them. These are insect pollinated. You see those five little ligules? Beautiful capitulum right there, huh? Anyway, I mean, it's got to be easily the largest cactus in the world. We're talking, you know, 30 foot spread, 30 foot. Uh, diameter at least probably 40 foot maybe 50 foot diameter get upwards of 60 feet tall eh, maybe no nah, maybe 30 feet tall pachycerius pringlii another species in this genus can get upwards of 60 feet tall and they get they can get very large too but a oh, beautiful butterfly look at it the beautiful butterfly some sort of damn swallowtail or something pachycerius pringlii doesn't get as wide though they're also a fucking beast of a cactus but they don't get as wide Nice little physalis here in the understory. Or is that Camisaracha? Anyway. Just a fucking... Look at it. What an amazing plant. Look at how big that trunk is. It's crazy to see a cactus like that. Just a giant organ pipe. I wonder how the distribution of this plant has shifted over the last 20,000 years. You know, when a cacti evolved, I think, originated in South America and made their way up here. They've come a long way in a short time, okay? You got alpine cacti, you got lowland desert cacti, you got cacti that shouldn't, uh, shouldn't grow where they do. It's just, you know, it's 105 degrees with no rain for months. And uh, you have these beasts, these Pachycerias. The whole tribe Pachyceriae, it's most of the columnar cacti. There's some really good stuff in there. 
That's the stuff that'll blow your mind. That's all these Mexican columnar cacti that'll knock your socks off. Look at the goddamn, look at the light. It's so beautiful out here. Again, I can see why humans have lived here for upwards of 20,000 years. And the color on those things is incredible too. They glaucus blue. Anyway, that's all I got for you tonight. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about a uh, cacti that can be as big as a goddamn house. Pack is serious Weber. Who this shit was Weber? I don't know. Who gives a fuck? What an incredible plant. I wonder what the, the mixed text called us. Anyway, that's all I got for you this evening. Have a good rest of the night. Go fuck yourself. Bye. And look at it, you still got the lichen all over the ground. Lichen's all over the ground. Because you got this silty, chalky stuff. See that? These these Cretaceous sediments that weather into these these clays. These clays and muds. Calcareous based sediments. Oh yeah! You gotta go to the sketchy spots to get the good plants. How's that for a euknide? For a euknidey? Look at that. Thing's a goddamn small tree. Just clambering to the side of the road. This is a small one, too. There were some that had a 12-foot spread dangling off a sheer rock cliff right above uh, the Kuota here in northern Oaxaca. Look at that goddamn thing. What a beast. Ah, fuck. How many stamen odes? How many stamen odes you got in there? How many stamens? Oop, I just broke the flower. Well, whatever. Now I guess I got to take it and press it. Look at it, though. What a fucking monster. Ah. Lois Sese, do you think Lois Sese could do that? you think Lois Sese could get that big? Yeah, just standing in the middle of the road looking at plants on the quota. Look at that. That's that's 10 feet across. See, they had to spray the side of the, the uh, cliff with the concrete because they get so many goddamn rock falls. Holy shit. It puts our, uh, puts our United States, Lois Sese, to shame. Let me step out before I get smacked right here. Is that not the biggest uke night you ever seen? Look at that goddamn thing. Holy hell. Just lighting up the side of the road on the damn quota in northern Oaxaca. Jesus Christ. Gypsum habitat of Oaxaca. Holy shit. Can you imagine how many endemics there are? But alas, we don't have enough time and the sun has already gone down. We got to be somewhere tomorrow so we can't explore, but we'll have to come back. Look at that shit though. Jesus Christ.